Okay, so we're on to day two in our marriage communication workshop. How was day one? Did you get through the work in the workbook? Have you printed the workbook? Make sure that you do. Um, and make sure that you are scheduling in some time to do the work. You should have seen yesterday, it probably took you 20 minutes or so to work through those things with God. Um, and I so excited to hear the stories that are going to come from just owning our part and just drawing near to the heart of God as we're fixing our eyes on him and taking our eyes off of this horizontal piece that robs us of our peace and ends up coming out with a whole lot of craziness in our words. Today in session two, you should have read through and talked with God about accepting our husbands. I want to talk about this a little more in depth because um, it really is a piece I denied for a lot of years. Um, I knew there were things that irritated me about my husband. Um, I knew there were things I thought he could, you know, he should grow here. Why isn't he growing in this area? These particular things over here, I mean, they're hurting him. I want him to do better and not be hurt. And I really saw um, my words, my way of treating my husband as helping him. You know, I'm his helpmate. I'm supposed to be helping him grow and learn and, and do all of these great big things. But this is what I've learned. Um, my husband hears those words as disrespect. He hears when I say, um, man, you know what you really, it seems like you're having a hard time remembering to take the trash out every morning. What if we put a reminder here? What if you, you know, put a note over here? What if you gave yourself a message on your phone to remind you to do that? To me, that sounds like I am helping my husband, giving him ideas so he quits messing up in this particular way. And um, what he hears is, man, she doesn't think I am responsible. She doesn't respect me enough to let me work through the process. She doesn't think my brain could have figured those things out. She doesn't respect me. She doesn't love me. She doesn't think highly of me at all. Um, so there was this time, and, and I've talked about it before, where we were just on the road to divorce. That's where our marriage was headed. And it didn't matter how many books I read. It didn't matter um, how much marriage counseling we went to. We were just in a bad, a bad place. And um, he would say things to me, you know, that I didn't know how to take. Um, he would say, you know what, if I'm going to get talked down to and beat up at work verbally and then get it at home too. I would just rather not work. You know what? I care about our life and, and I'm just gonna, and I would be like, who's talking down to you? <laughs> who's beating you up verbally? Who's doing that? Me. I was, um, every time I offered him my wisdom about how to put being late to work about how to, you know, iron his pants if he cared about that, about how he ought to be talking to his kids differently. Um, every time I nagged him about his Bible study, you know, hey, you've been watching a whole lot of TV today, but have you been in the Word? He heard that as a tap. He heard that as his wife doesn't think he can do these things. And if I'm very honest, I didn't think he could do those things. I thought he, he needs my help. He's really struggling and I can help him. I can do this. That's my role. That's my job. Um, and what he needs is a cheerleader and someone who believes in him and admires him and respects him. And I was choosing the words that speak death. Okay. Now we've talked about this verse a couple of times now, but he tells us that our words hold the power of life or death. And instead of finding some way to affirm him and appreciate all the things that he's doing right, I would make it my job to point out all the things he's doing wrong. And here's the thing, right? In that particular time in our marriage, he was not doing a lot of things right. Um, it was very hard to find things to appreciate him about, but we are going to get into that next week. I'm just saying 
there still are ways that we can get a hold of how we're saying things, what we're saying. And in our session today, we talked about the importance of accepting our husband as who he is in this season and the importance of taking our expectations off of him and setting them on God. And the Bible over and over and over again talks about God in this way that I had missed for years. I, I had always understood God to be like my heavenly father, um, as a father who loves his children. I'm a child of God and he's my father. But there's this other picture of him as the bridegroom and the body of Christ as the bride and how he loves us, how he cares for us and cherishes us and how he will be a husband to the widows. There have been times in my marriage where my husband is learning and struggling and in all of these places and I feel abandoned and I feel like he's not meeting any of my needs. He's not, these are the things, you know, and I expect him to hold my hand. I expect him to take out the trash. I expect him to listen if I need to talk. I expect all of these things of him. And now listen, I'm not saying that our husband is not responsible for anything. But as we are working to improve communication for this very short period, I want us to take our expectations off of our husbands, okay? With the exception of the expectation that he will be faithful to me, I do not expect anyone to allow that. Um, but I'm talking about the expectations of he's going to text me twice a day. He's going to, you know, help me clean up the dinner dishes. He's going to work a steady job. Okay. Even that, even those kind of expectations, let's take those off of our husbands for a minute. And instead of trying to hold him to this perfect standard, okay, which is what I'm guilty of over and over and over again. And I tell myself repeatedly, my husband is not Jesus Christ. He's not perfect. He's going to mess up. He is still learning. He is just another Christian in the process of discipleship, in the process of being transformed and sanctified and justified and molded into the image of God. He's in the process just like me. And just like I make mistakes, my husband's going to make mistakes and I want to accept him where he is. But that leaves this feeling over here. Okay. Um, our pastor does such a good job of explaining that we have these buckets, you know, these love buckets. He doesn't say it like that. I'm so paraphrasing. Um, but like we have these buckets of need. I need I need a partner in life. I need a friend. I need a lover. I need someone who is going to provide for me, who's going to protect me. I need some things in life for a season. Okay. And I'm going to say at least for the duration of this workshop and between you and God talk about when this needs to change really at the place of where your husband is in life. Let's take these needs to God. He tells us um, in the book of Peter that we can cast every single care on him, every need, every longing of our heart. And he cares for us. He will meet those needs. He will be a husband to us in this season where we're trying to get our heart in order and fix our heart. And some of the things that come out of my mouth, um, or even when I can catch it from coming on out of my mouth and I'll say a different thing, it comes across in my face, right? Like this crazy woman looking at me in the mirror. I feel like she betrays me over and over and over again because what I'm saying to him sometimes now is, Hey babe, you want to go snuggle? And my face says, you haven't snuggled with me in two months. And how dare you? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just like this. And he sees my face and he hears my words. And he'll say to me at this point, we're several years into this. And he'll say, what were you really just thinking? I'm like, what do you mean? You heard what I said. No, but your face your face said something else. So I'm like, girl, get it together. Let's go practice this phrase again in the mirror because I need you not to betray my thoughts. Really, I need to get my thoughts together. And we're going to dive into that tomorrow. But for today, 
I swear thinking about how do I really accept my husband and accept that he's not meeting my needs in a lot of areas when I still have all these needs, okay? This bucket over here that my husband should be filling is empty and I need things at this moment. I'm gonna say that we can take those needs to God. So in the book of Ephesians chapter five, we hear this, you know, quoted to us as wives all the time, right? He says in verse um, 22, wives, Submit to your husbands as to the Lord. And that's where we stop a lot of times, okay? You just submit. Who cares if that man is not meeting your needs? If you have all of this longing and this pent-up resentment and frustration and bitterness for all the things that he needs to be doing, but he's not there yet, who cares about that? You are still supposed to submit to him. So I want to shift our focus there for a minute um, because yes, we are supposed to submit to our husbands, but really what that looks like is surrendering to God. So let's surrender. Let's give up these needs for a season to God. All right. And let God be our husband. It finishes out in this. It says, for your husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church. He's the savior of his body, the church. And as the church submits to Christ, or as we can submit to Christ, so you wives should submit to your husbands in everything. Okay, and that's hard, right? It's hard because we want to say, but I'll submit to him when he takes care of the rest of this passage, right? Because it talks to our husbands as well, right? For the husbands, this means love your wives just as Christ loves the church. And I want to pause there for a minute. He talks about that he is the bridegroom and we are the bride. Can we go to him in this moment with our bucket, with all of these expectations and all of these very real needs and say, do you know what, God, right now my husband can't. And he hasn't for a long time and it hurts. And I have these needs and I have these expectations. Would you please be a husband to me? Would you please meet these needs? And this is what he says he does. So this is what he says that he will do as our husband. He says, right, um, that Christ, as Christ loved the church, and he loved the church so much he gave up his life for her to make her holy and clean, washed by the cleansing of God's word. He did this to present her to himself as the glorious church without spot or wrinkle, or any other blemish. I love that, that he will wash us of our sins and present us before God sinless. That, that gets me every time. Um, he says, instead, right, she'll be holy and without fault. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as they love their own bodies. For a man who loves his wife actually shows love for himself. We can come to God and ask him in this season where we are intentionally working toward accepting our husband as who he is and who he is is a human being who falls short and we still have all of these needs and we can say to God please love me please be a husband to me please meet these needs while you're teaching my husband how to meet them and help me help me to continually bring these needs back to you and I'm going to ask you this. How often do you pray for yourself and pray for your own needs? I'm guilty of spending the majority of my prayer life praying for other people, other people's needs, people that I serve and minister with, people who are in other countries serving other people. And I have to remember that God cares about me and wants me to bring my real needs before him. He will also be working on your husband to teach him and mold him in how to love you in the way that will meet these needs. But it takes time. And as we are waiting, right, in that waiting time, it is not a wasted time. It is a time where we can come to God, get him to meet our needs, to fill our bucket, okay, so that as we are accepting our husbands and loving him and learning how to respect him the way he understands respect, we're speaking from a place 
of being filled. This is the place I love. Our pastor repeats this over and over. And it's a truth that I need to be reminded that my words are going to be more kind and more loving when my needs are met. And you know what? When I'm angry with my husband for not meeting my needs, my words are going to be the words that bring death. We want those words to bring life. So as we're learning how to accept him, part of that is learning how to get God to meet those needs, asking him, begging him, being tender and raw and vulnerable with him about those needs, and he will meet them. It will be just this intimate relationship between the two of you. And, and I mean that, okay, not, not like a wild, crazy affair. I'm talking about God, the lover of our soul, who has every resource available to meet our needs, to provide for us, to protect for us, to give us peace and comfort us and love us the way that we understand love. And he will. And it helps this relationship as we are getting peace because we're keeping our eyes fixed on him and we're drawing near to him and he's drawing near to us. And he is very gently changing and working on the things that are in our hearts so that the things that come out of our mouth will bring life. Make sure that you are spending time in your workbook today, doing the work, looking at the things, bringing the needs to God, the real needs. Take that time because he tells us, right? And I said this earlier, but I'm going to repeat it, that he cares about the things that we care about, that he wants us to talk to him about them. He wants us to bring them before him. Yes, he already knows. He is an all-knowing, all-powerful God. But he wants that relationship with us where we can bring our needs to him and trust him. And I love that concept of journaling through it. Okay, don't miss this part because then when you look back at this piece in six months and a year and you will be able to more easily see what God did, how he moved and be able to glorify him and it grows our faith. We can share it with others to help grow their faith. All right, I'm going to leave you to it, and I will see you all tomorrow for the next session. You all have a blessed day.